Hello! This video is part of a series of videos on the baseline real business cycle model and its implementation in Dynair. In this particular video, I will show you how to calibrate the model parameters of a baseline RBC model with leisure. And first I will go through some general ideas and tips how to calibrate the parameters of the RBC model. And second, I will then show you some tips and uh, advanced methods to accomplish this in Dynair. So even though this model is very simple and very straightforward to calibrate, I will still show you some, some neat little tricks in Dynair to do a very sophisticated calibration that you will definitely need if you work with larger models. The basic idea of calibration is of course to, to target some value of endogenous uh, variables, say a long run uh, ratio, by setting a parameter. And what we usually do, we try out different parameters until we get this ratio right. And in Dynair, there is actually a very helpful command where you can change the types of parameters and variables. That is, so basically you just enter the ratio you want to target and then you use numerical optimization te techniques that actually finds you the correct value of the parameter. Moreover, I will show you how you can do this in a very sophisticated way using modularization. And that is, you separate your mode files into smaller mode files. Okay, so some mode files take care of the actual calibration of parameters with, for instance, switching the types, and other mode files do other stuff. So like simulations or policy analysis or other stuff you want to do. And once you start working with large scale models, take for instance, the Eagle model of the ECB with its thousand equations, this modularization technique will make life easy and make your model tractable for you. Anyways, there are timestamps in the video description, um, so feel free to skip ahead. If you find this video useful or if you spot any mistakes, please let me know in the comments section so I can update the description accordingly. And as always, check out my blog on other stuff regarding DSG models and Dynair. Let's dive in. Okay, so let's talk about some calibration strategies. Um, what you often find uh, is that people simply reuse values taken from other papers. So while this approach gives some robustness uh, to compare results across papers if you're really using the same model, but it lacks uh, the exact reasoning for the parameters. So a better approach is to use data on say long run averages of wages, of working hours, of interest rates, inflation, of consumption shares, government spending ratios, etc. to fix, for instance, steady state uh, values or ratios of steady state values in your model. And this can be done by choosing the parameters to target a certain ratio. And this is what is done in the whole RBC literature. Of course, you can also rely on micro studies, but you have to be very careful about the aggregation aspects of micro data if you go to the aggregate. Um, in the following, I will uh, try to calibrate the model parameters of the RBC baseline model with leisure using data for OECD countries. Okay, note that this is just one approach to calibration. Um, again, it is always about what you want to achieve with your model. And with the RBC models, we want to target long run ratios. Okay, let's start with the productivity parameter alpha. In the model, we have assumed uh, that the production function is of the Cobb Douglas type. So that this alpha is equal to the proportion of capital income, R times K, to total income, so divided by Y. Um, so this is the average capital share. Aggregate data on capital is a bit tricky to get. So what people usually do is they look at um, national accounts and have a look at the labor income. And we know that the labor income over total income must be equal to one minus alpha when you use a Cobb Douglas production function. Now let's have a look at the depreciation rate delta. And for quarterly data, what you usually find in papers is values in the range of 2% uh, to 3%. And actually get this value from a model implicit way. That is, we simply use or have a look at our steady state relationship for investment over capital 
and we can then have a look what kind of ratios do we have data on for OECD countries. We find that the average ratio of investment to output is around uh, 0.25 and the average uh, capital productivity, so K bar over Y bar, is roughly between 9 or rather 10. Okay, so and we can then use this using our model implicit steady state relationship to calibrate the value of delta. Now what about the discount factor beta? Um, this is a measure of the sub subjective intertemporal preference rate of households. And there, are, there is some micro data on this, of course, but again, we have to uh, be careful about aggregation issues. And you will often find that for quarterly data, uh, the, um, people tend to set this value very close to one, but slightly less than one, um, to take care of the fact that agents discount the future. So we like consuming today. A better way to do to calibrate this value is to use a model implicit way. Again, looking at steady state relationships for the steady state interest rate and also the Euler equation in steady state, we actually get an equation how to calibrate beta. Now let's talk about the uh, parameters of the uh, productivity process. This uh, persistence parameter rho and maybe also the standard deviation of the shock. Uh, what the RBC literature usually do is uh, we look at um, the so-called Zolo residual, which is again using the Cobb Douglas productivity function um, assumption. And then we can actually do a regression uh, because we have data on output, we have possibly data on capital, and we also have data on labor. And when we regress, we get um, predicted values for our te technology process. And then we can do another regression in order to get the persistence parameter here, rho, and also an estimate of the standard deviation. Um, for calibrating this sigma, um, of course, this is uh, something you have to be very careful about. This has actually implications for the dynamics of your model. So when you're looking at impulse response functions or you want to simulate scenarios, then you should tweak this to, to have realistic reaction. And, of, and if you have even more shocks, then usually we find that this, those standard deviations uh, need to be lowered. Now let's have a look at the utility function at um, the elasticities. So this eta C and this eta L. And of course, uh, which kind of elasticities you really have in your model depends on the utility functions. And we have talked about lock utility where you don't have the, where this, these elasticities are just uh, equal to one. Um, or if you use the CS utility and additive separable, then um, we see that this parameter eta c is actually the risk aversion and how to set the risk aversion is highly debated in the literature and you find all sorts of values. Um, typically for baseline RBC models um, we uh, set this to 2 but again this has implications uh, on say your dynamics of the model so you have to be to have to look at impulse response functions etc. Uh, and the volatility of the variables to uh, set this according to, to what you want to analyze. Then eta L or the inverse of eta L is actually the, the Frisch um, elasticity of labor. So this is a, a um, measure of people's willingness to trade work for consumption over time. So this measures basically the substitution effect. And the higher the Frisch elasticity, uh, the more willing you are to work uh, if the wage increased. And you find all sorts of values for ETL in the literature. And here people often look at the volatility of um, the model variables. And say if you set ETL to two, uh, this often produces a little, too little variation in labor supply. Uh, so we would we can actually far, farther decrease this then consider maybe the log utility case or even the linear case by setting this to, to zero. Again, here, those two values, uh, you need to calibrate carefully to what you want to focus on in your analysis. Now, what about the utility weights, this gamma and psi parameter? Um, 
Well, here um, we have one model implicit way to calibrate these uh, values because we have a steady state relationship for labor. And for instance, by, by just fixing one of those weights, by normalizing it, say, to one, we can then put everything on the, on the right-hand side and calibrate the other parameter accordingly. And for this, we need to target steady state labor. And here, assume in steady state, we work eight hours a day. So one third might be a good calibration for steady state labor. And this has implications for consumption over labor, which is a composite um, expression of other parameters that we already calibrated. And so you can compute the value of Psi while normalizing gamma. Okay, now let's have a look at the implementation in Dynair. Okay, so let's open up the um, mode file that we use in this whole video series. Um, check out the other videos. Okay, now let's do a more sophisticated calibration on what we have seen here. Let's start with the productivity parameter alpha. Labor share, uh, labor income to output is equal to say 0 0.65. And then alpha is one minus this here. Now what about the depreciation rate for this? I'm using for the calibration the average ratio of investment to output and the capital productivity. Okay, so delta equals I over Y divided by K over Y. Okay, so I got rid of alpha, I got rid of delta. Now let's have a look at the discount factor. Okay. Here I have this expression that beta equals one over the steady state nominal interest rate plus one minus delta. I've already calibrated delta, so I need to find R bar. Well, I have already have K over Y, so I can very easily, and maybe I should. Okay, let's do it like this. Okay, now what about the TFP parameters? Well, here we could do a regression. This is uh, beyond the scope of this tutorial. So I will simply use some values here. I will calibrate these, okay? So I will simply do that. And the standard deviation, as I'm not doing simulations um, in this tutorial, I don't need to calibrate this right now. Okay, let's have a look at the utility elasticities. Um, this depends on what you want to achieve with your model, especially on if you simulate the model, um, because this is implications for the dynamics here as well. So I'm simply using um, these two values, why not? Okay. Now what about the utility weights? Here a strategy would be to normalize one um, and try to target steady state labor equals one third. Okay, so let's normalize gamma and try to... And then I have this equation here, which determines Psi. Good, okay. Now here we have the expressions for Psi. The problem here is we still need, we actually need um, W in terms of the parameters I've already calibrated and C over L. So going back to my steady state model, I need actually W and C over L. So I would in a sense need to copy this whole block right here. Okay. And then when I have all these expressions, then I'm finished. So let me quickly check. What does this imply for? Okay, so oh, I want to target L equals one third, of course. Okay, so I would get a Psi of about two and the rest looks okay. So let's try to run Dynair. So let's add the path. And there you go. Okay, now let me show you a more sophisticated way to calibrate the model parameters. And here I will do two things. First, I will um, put the mode file into several different parts. That is what we call modularization. And then I will use the change type command to declare variables as parameters and, and parameters as variables. 
in order to uh, calibrate. So how do we do this? First, let's go ahead and create, um, I don't know, a new folder and create a script called RBC nonlinear sim declarations. And as ending of the file, you could do whatever you want to, okay? I like to do is use ink as I want to include this file. And I'm creating another one and I'm calling this model equations, for my model equations. Okay, and then I'm creating a mode file, which I'm using to compute the steady state of a very simplified version. Now, let's open this. And I'm copying all the symbolic declarations into this include file. And to have a nicer color structure, I'm also adding this ink to my file extensions, okay? So when I'm reopening this, it has some color. Okay, now the model equations, I'm gonna put the whole model block into this. Okay, and now I want to do something. So even though, of course, the RBC model is very simple, okay, so you don't have to really do this, but just assume for now that you have a very complicated model. Um, say you have several countries, some are symmetric, others are not, and you want to calibrate this, but you don't know how, okay? So this is very com a very complicated task. And one approach to do that is to start with a simplified version of your model. And the simplified version I want to start here is the log utility case, okay? Um, at the end, I want to have the model with CS utility and this calibration where I'm targeting several ratio, but first I'm breaking it down to a very simplified version where I can compute everything in closed form. I'm setting this explicitly to zero because at the end I want to be at the uh, model with CS utility, but I'm starting with um, setting eta C and eta L to one. I'm defining a new variable called steady, which is set to one um, to uh, make some changes uh, that are important when calibrating um, your model. Okay, so first I'm including the symbolic declarations file. So this is just including all the text that is in symbolic declarations.ink. Uh, it will put this into this mode file. Okay, this is done by the preprocessor and the model equations. And then the easiest model I can think of. Okay, setting eta C and eta L to one. Why? because then I can actually compute the steady state in closed form. Okay. Now, but for calibrating, I want to base my calibration on certain um, ratios. So let us include this in the symbolic declarations. I'm including additional variables, okay? So for those ratios I want to target. And for this, uh, additional variables, of course, I'm also needing some additional equations, but only if this steady variable is defined. I've defined if this macro is steady, if that is equal to one, I have three more variables, three more equations, and of course, I need for those equations also um, a way to compute the steady state, which is very easy. Okay, let's see whether this worked. Okay, so I want this to be 65%, I want this to be 25%, and I want this to be 10 so this is not a good calibration here yet. And also, I don't want to have the log utility case, so I actually I want to change these two parameters to something else, like maybe two or one. There's a nice command um, that we will use. 
That is called save params and steady state. And you simply define a name where you want to save that. Okay, so let's rerun this. And here you can see a txt file where the current values for based on the steady state and also for the parameters here are just saved in this text file. My goal is to work with the more complicated model with the CS utility and also to target those steady state ratios. Okay, so let us create another mode file. Let's call this RBC nonlinear steady 2.mod. So here I want to have the CS utility case. I'm still doing something special. So I'm setting steady here to one. I'm including the symbolic declarations. But now I am changing the type of parameters and variables. So there is a nice command in Dynair change type. So I have declared those four as variables, but this command now makes them as parameters. And I've declared those as parameters. Now this command makes them as variables. Note that one, two, three, four, I have four variables that change their type. So I also need four parameters that change their type. And then I'm including the model equations. I'm loading in all the values for parameters and variables. Uh, this txt file does not distinguish between parameters and variables. So those, those will be set. So this will be now our initial values. Okay. And now I'm changing the parameters. Okay. So I want to set those elasticities to something else than one. But I also want to set those ratios. I want to target those, right? I want this to be one third, this 65%, uh, this to be 25% and this to be 10. And because I have changed the type, those are actually now parameters. So this command set parameter value will make sure that parameter values get set to this new value in the global M underscore structure. Let's compute the steady state and let's save the resulting values into another txt file. Note that I don't use a steady state model block here anymore and don't use the helper function or anything like that. So this steady command, if you don't have a steady state model block in this, uh, in this file, this will actually use the init val block. And by loading params and steady state, I'm loading those as initial values. So the simplified model provides me the initial values for the more complicated model. Okay. So in order to target those ratios, I need to set the parameters to these values here. So let's create yet another mode file. Let's call this RBC nonlinear final dot MOD. Um, I'm including the symbolic declarations, the model equations, and I'm using the parameterization that is saved in this txt file, the calibration here. So let's run this. And you can see that, cool, I wanted to target exactly those values and I wanted this to be one third. Cool. Okay, so and which parameters are res needed for this? Well, I, if I am setting eta c eta l equals to this guy, then you will see how to set beta, delta, psi, and alpha. Now, I hope you um, have understood that modularizing your mode files is very handy, particularly if you work with different versions of your model. So maybe you have a calibration for uh, the US and maybe another calibration for Germany and another one for Italy and another one for France. So you can simply use this add hashtag include command to um, include the relevant parameterization. Um, Doing stuff differently when you're computing steady states or calibrations is very common in these G models, but also 
I think the, the overview you have here is very nice. So again, the step was first try to compute a very simple fight version of your model. Okay, so for instance, in my case, the log utility case, where I can actually do this in closed form. Okay, I have a steady state model block here. Now save all those values, parameters and, and steady state and orderness variables in uh, some file. Then go ahead and change um, or include additional uh, variables um, and equations for ratios, for instance, you want to target and declare these as parameters. Okay, and then reload your values from the simplified model, change stuff, okay, recompute the steady state. Again, this will just use numerical optimization here. So this is basically the init val block where the initial values come from this txt file. And then you have actually computed the values for the parameters that you need to target those ratios. And this is what we do in calibration exercises. Okay, and I'm saving this and then I can reuse this file to do, I don't know, maybe to do uh, a impulse response function analysis. Okay, that's it. I hope you found this video insightful. Please leave your comments below. Um, in the next videos, I will cover topics like how to linearize or log linearize uh, the model equations by hand and should you really do that. Um, how to do simulations in Dynair, how to estimate the model parameters with maximum likelihood, Bayesian MCMC, SMM or GMM. Uh, but I will also have a look at different variants of the baseline RBC model and what this means for welfare and also policy considerations. The overall goal of this video series is to use a very simple model as an example um, for showcasing all the neat little things and toolboxes Dynair offers that make life as a macroeconomist and working then also with larger models much easier. Have a good day.